Hi, hello, and welcome back to The High Method. My name is Jen Hatz. I am the host of The High Method podcast and also the founder of The High Method, a holistic, integrative, and innovative approach to assessing and optimizing human health, well-being, and performance. And I'm partnered with Neuroforce One, a human performance company that has been training champions for years. And they offer training and assessments in their facility, as well as remote options available. And today we are answering the very like all-time classic question, really, that anyone ever has when it comes to their health. And it's not in any way related to their health. It's specific to body composition, which I guess is indirectly related to your health, right? So we can, we can give that. But everyone's big question always is about body composition or in some way trying to troubleshoot something going on because their body composition changes had stalled or plateaued. And what I mean by body composition, I mean trying to gain lean body mass, gain muscle mass, and trying to lose body fat. More often than not, we're all trying to do both at the same time because you need to be doing both at the same time. If you want to have the benefit of either one or the other, chances are you're going to be doing both at the same time. So gaining lean body mass or gaining muscle mass is really what is not only promoting, I mean, everything related to your athletic performance towards your strength, your stability, your power, like everything related to, like I said, just performance and athleticism in general. But that's also from a body composition standpoint, that's also what's giving you shape and specifically the type of shape that you're aiming for. And so training for that lean body mass, training for that muscle mass in order to gain and maintain that lean body mass is like the number one goal. And then being able to remove or eliminate or limit any excess body fat kind of comes secondary really to the lean body mass gain and maintain really. So that combination of, of gaining lean body mass, losing body fat, all going into your body composition and what your body is composed of, because that's what your body composition is. So to t- kind of help, I guess, first give you like the big short answer that I would give, and then this is how you would start to troubleshoot then. So everything related to your body composition is a test, T-E-S-T. So it's training, eating, sleeping, and time. So the way that you start to look at these different pieces and ask yourself what and in what ways are you doing in each of these pieces, maybe what needs to be tweaked or adjusted in some way. So that first T, training, like I just said, with building and maintaining lean body mass. So the type of training that you are engaged in needs to be doing that. It needs to be stimulating lean body mass, but also it needs to be very intentionally programmed out and implemented so that way you're gaining the benefits of training without overdoing it, that you're allowing yourself the recovery time from training to actually fully recover before you go back for more training. So there's a very particular rhyme and a reason to the training piece of the puzzle, but it still comes first out of this entire equation. So anything that you need to troubleshoot on your training side of things could be, am I doing too much? Am I overdoing it? Am I overexerting myself? Am I under recovered, really? Which ends up more often than not, it's not so much that you're overdoing it, but that you are under recovered. But I give that, you know, with a big asterisk as as a side note that it's also common for those of us, especially if you're just a high energy person, it's it's not hard to overdo it sometimes. Like, especially if you got a whole lot of things going on and you're like, oh, I want to do this and this and this. And then your your excitement gets ahead of you. And before you know it, you're overdoing it. So that training piece of the puzzle really zeroing in and and selecting the appropriate amount for you based on what you need and the appropriate recovery that you need to fully recover from the training so that way when you are back in training then you can actually give it your full effort or the amount of effort that is required of that training session beautiful right so that's the training side of things and then you have eating and so eating the troubleshooting with eating it could be all over the place it could be that you need more calories than what you're taking in It could be that you need more carbohydrates than what you're taking in. It could be that maybe you are unintentionally, unknowingly overeating. Maybe if you're if you're in that that kind of like, you know, we all have those those times when we're, you know, maybe a little bit stressed and we start eating some extra peanut butter on the side. And before you know it, all a whole lot of peanut butter goes down. And like those little nuances, those start to add up. And so the eating part of the equation ends up being very individualized. And very specific to what it is that you're, well, what you're consuming, but also what you're experiencing and what sort of circumstances or changes may be occurring, maybe in your stress levels or in your your overall, 
if you're like, you know, spending all day at work and you're eating certain foods at work and then you come home and, and eat certain foods at home, there are so many different pieces that you could start to troubleshoot with the eating side of the equation. And it still kind of centers on, like I said, either overeating what you need or not eating enough, not eating enough calories, not eating enough carbohydrates. And I would say personally, what I've seen really, I, I say personally, but professionally as a dietitian, what I've seen, especially with more performance populations is that they end up under eating for what they actually need, specifically under eating carbohydrates for what they actually need. A lot of it is is unfortunately like a fear-based view of carbohydrates and what they do for your body, but they're actually going to help promote your performance, which like I said, with training being that first priority is going to help promote your body composition then because it's helping promote your performance with your training. So now you're troubleshooting for the first one by troubleshooting for the second one. Look at that. So now continuing on with this, the test, T-E-S-T. -E so after we troubleshoot for training and for eating, sleep. Sleep is the most important step, we'll say. I mean, obviously, besides training and eating. Sleep is, is when you are fully actually recovering. So you can have an absence of training, like a, a rest day, but you need to have legitimate rest and sleep in order for everything to be able to recover fully, regenerate fully, and therefore to reap the benefits of what you're doing and prepare you to do more safely without harming yourself, without risking injury. Sleep is, is if anything, the silent like, like barrier that I think holds a lot of people back from achieving what they would like to have when it comes to body composition changes. And a lot of it is because sleep is not something that we are necessarily like aware of whether or not we're, you know, having good sleep or not. We, we can wake up in the morning and feel like, yeah, I feel great or feel like, man, I didn't sleep great at all. And then you kind of feel like you're just already behind on the day, you know. So sleep, the best thing you can do to try to troubleshoot your sleep and to try to ensure that you're getting the quantity and the quality of sleep because you need both is to really prioritize the length of time that you are giving yourself for sleep, which means that you got to prioritize the length of time that you are in bed with no electronics on, no lights on. You are in sleep mode, whether or not you're actually asleep in the physiological state, you're giving yourself the opportunity to sleep because you are setting the environment for you to sleep. So what that can mean is setting aside, we'll say like a bedtime and a wake up time that's going to give you, if we say nine to 10 hours in bed, knowing that you're going to have moments throughout the night where you're tossing and turning, you're waking up, whatever, that at least within that window of time that you're in bed in a sleep environment that is going to help promote sleep, that you're more than likely getting between your seven to nine hours of sleep that you actually need. So building in that buffer really into the sleep window. So your actual sleep time should be like seven to nine hours, but you need to build in that buffer into the overall time that you are in bed, really. But not just in bed watching TV. I mean, in bed with lights off, electronics off, dark room. It's a sleep environment for nine to 10 hours so that you can get those seven to nine hours, whatever it is that you actually do need. So that's your your big sleep tip is that to really set aside that time to allow yourself to have that that sleep environment that you need to promote sleep. So after troubleshooting for your training, your eating, your sleeping, now comes the fourth that no one wants to hear. And it's the fact that it's time. Time is the one variable that we can't really manipulate, right? So the unfortunate thing is that we don't have control over the rate or the pace that time moves. Time moves at, at the rate and pace that time moves in. But knowing that everything that you're doing, you could be spot on with everything you're doing and you're just a little impatient for the results. So just that little bit of patience could help you to experience that much greater of, of a day-to-day -day experience really in moving through these different things because you know that you're doing what you do have control over. You're taking control over what you do have. And you're also acknowledging the fact that you're being patient and allowing for time to happen. So if it comes to troubleshooting for time, you can just ask yourself that most like simple question, really, am I expecting results too soon? Has it been long enough that I've been doing X, Y, Z to be able to see changes? Maybe I need to give myself another four to eight weeks of eating this calorie amount to see if it's going to actually have an effect. Maybe I'm just being impatient right now with the results. And the other thing too is like, 
have I just waited too long to make any changes? Have I held out, I guess, maybe staying stuck in a certain pattern because I didn't want to change anything and maybe it's time to change things. So checking in with time in a realistic perspective, and this is probably the hardest thing to, to you know, everyone can can openly admit that like, yeah, trying to be patient and trying to be realistic about time, being realistic about our expectations of what we can achieve in a certain length of time. And also being okay with the fact that, yeah, we may have been plugging away at XYZ things for however long, and maybe we're not where we want to be yet. But as long as you keep going, you can still trust that time isn't going to stop. Time is going to keep going too. So just keep riding the wave. Keep keep facing that test. Keep uh, troubleshooting through the test, the T-E-S-T, and give yourself that patience and just enjoy it, truly. Drop a comment below if this helped or if you want to know anything else related to that topic of body composition. Thanks. Bye-bye.